welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year. I know it is basically like March right now, but y'all already know how it is around them holidays. You know, your family get together, them babies get to crying, folks start sneezing. I got sick. I've literally been sick for like three weeks since like right after Christmas, I've been sick. And if, it's, if I sound congested, that's what it is. So just blame nature. But this video is all about law school, my experience there. Uh, would I go again? Do I think it was worth it? Um, I get asked questions a lot about law school. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a lawyer, so I didn't mention that. <laughs> I am a lawyer. I've been barred for a few years now. I am a practicing lawyer. And I, I was apprehensive about doing a video like this because number one, I don't think that anyone can answer those questions about whether you should go to law school. Is it worth it? Because those are personal, like, answers like I can't I can't say if it's gonna be worth it to you any more than it was worth it to me I can tell you what my my perspective is on it but there are a lot of things that you should consider before making a decision like that because it is a life-changing decision in reality it actually is so um, that's what this video is about one of my subscribers actually emailed me like a lot of questions I'm not gonna mess your name up on YouTube because I can't pronounce a girl, but shout out to you, I appreciate you. So I'm gonna kind of go through her questions and just share with you all my experiences. And if you still have questions after that, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll get back to you. So I'm gonna start off with the LSAT. The LSAT is the test that you take um, before you apply to law school, it's the aptitude test. And in reality, the LSAT is really not like a legal test it's more so based on reasoning and how you answer questions um, so I did take a test prep course I believe that it was called test masters I think I was in my junior year of college in my first semester when I took it I think it cost about fourteen hundred dollars I believe it was maybe six weeks or so this was many years ago so y'all have to forgive my memory it's not that fresh but I did take a prep course I took the LSAT twice I did better the first time than I did the second time, so I only submitted my first LSAT scores on my applications. And I mean, I don't think that I did like a stellar job on the LSAT. I honestly am not a good test taker. So for those of you who um, are fearful about testing everything like that, I am not good at test taking at all. Like I don't think that tests, I always feel like it's a trick question and I just answer them wrong because I feel like they're trying to trick me. And I'm like, aha. You try to trick me, but they're like, aha, you're wrong. So it just doesn't always work out for me. So I took the LSAT twice. I think I took it maybe at the end of my first semester junior year and again the spring semester of junior year. I submitted my college applications my second semester of junior year, I think. Yeah, I did. It had to be then. And um, I only applied to three law schools. I got into two of them. The one that I didn't get into was, of course, my top choice, but it was okay because I still went to a really good law school. And um, I do, do I think the prep course was helpful? I think it was helpful to me because I'm not a good test taker, but if you pretty much do well, like if you did well on your SATs, if you're a person who can kind of like get a book, study it and kind of understand it, then maybe you don't need to take a prep course. Um, and if you have taken the LSAT once, you don't think you did well, then perhaps you should look into a prep course. But I'm sure that nowadays there's probably a lot more information available to people outside of taking prep courses. So I would definitely do my research on that. My experience taking the LSAT, I honestly don't remember. I honestly can't remember, but I feel like it was kind of like when you took the SAT or like the ACT, it's kind of like that. I mean. It's just a test. It's a standardized test. And I, I didn't put too much, I try not to put too much stress on myself, even though it is a stressful test because it's like, okay, based on my score, I may or may not get into a certain law school. And I will say this, I applied to law schools who had LSAT score ranges higher than my actual LSAT score. And I got into those law schools. So like, for instance, if the LSAT score, their range was like 170 to 175. And for instance, if you have like a 140, I still would apply. Like, I mean, because you never know all the things that they're considering when they're picking their new students from the applicant pool. So if you want to apply to a school, I mean, unless it's something that you know you can't afford or you, you can't live there or you, you really don't want to pay the application fee and you really think it's a stretch for you to get in, then maybe not. But if, it's a, if you really want to try it, then go for it. So I only applied to three schools because I knew I wanted to practice law in a particular state. So I did apply to schools in that state, um, just thinking that the curriculum would be more geared towards the law that I would be practicing, but we'll come back to that much later. <laughs> so one of the questions I get asked is, do you have to have a political background or some type of legal studies undergraduate degree to apply to law school? And you actually don't. My undergrad degree is in finance. I was a business major. I thought that I was going to get a job on Wall Street, but when I came out of undergrad, that was when they were like rescinding offers from the seniors my junior year who had 
offers from these big major companies. Everybody was going bankrupt. Everybody was getting sued. It was awful. And I was like, I'm not about to graduate from, from undergrad and not have a job. Like, I just can't do that. So that's pretty much where my decision to go to law school kind of came from. It was just like the next logical step for me. I had toyed with the idea of being a lawyer, but I wasn't ever like gung ho about it. I never was like, I'm going to be a lawyer. That wasn't my goal in life. But law school is just something I decided to do. And that leads me into my next phase of um, discussion topics. So one of the questions I am asked sometimes is how was the transition to law school going from undergrad? So for starters, I went to an HBCU, which is a historically black college or university. So I was the majority as an African-American. Going into law school, I instantly became the minority again, um, not only being a woman, but being an African-American woman. So that was somewhat of just a culture shock. Also, the place where I went to law school, it wasn't a big city, it was more of a college town. And when you're in professional school, you're not an undergrad. I mean, it's not party time. It's not drink time all the time. I mean, it's really time to sit down and study and be lame. And that's what I had to do. And I did not like where I went to law school. I didn't like the area. So that was really hard for me. I would always drive back home um, to Atlanta. I would spend as much time as I could in the city because that was my outlet. So it was somewhat difficult transitioning, especially my first semester. Because at our law school, the way that the classes were set up, you had class Monday through Friday. It was like from eight to five. You're coming off of your senior year of undergrad. Well, I was, I went straight through where I only had a couple classes and I picked my schedule and I was done. I didn't have class on Friday. Your girl was done by lunchtime. I was chilling on the yard. I don't know what y'all was doing, but when you get back to law school, it's like, no, you're here every day. Then there was a long break between classes. I guess they wanted you to like study and prep for your next class. I ain't got, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be here all day. So that was like, I did not like that. The classes themselves, uh, law school is just different. It's a different beast. I mean, there's cold calling where basically the teachers will just pick from the roster. If you go to a larger school, they might just pick from the roster and call you out that day. And you have to brief all the cases that y'all were assigned. You have to answer the questions. And you're, you're a one L, a first year law student, which is a one L. You don't know how to read cases and interpret them. You don't understand what the stuff means. So it's embarrassing at times and it's just intimidating sometimes, but you kind of get over it. You get used to it. You have to kind of tell yourself, I'm, I'm in a classroom full of other one L's because you take all of your first year classes with your one L classmates. Well, that's how it is at that. That's how it was at my school. I can't speak for every school. So I was only with first year students. Didn't nobody know what they was doing. Everybody was scared. Everyone was intimidated. So it's, it's like you're not alone. It, so don't don't be scared about the law school setup as far as the classes are concerned. Like you'll get it and eventually you once you get cold called then you good to go till they get through everybody else and they're gonna come back though. So just be ready once they get through everybody else. <laughs> so just be ready. <laughs> when it comes to studying, I'm not really like the best person to talk about. If you want like study tips, I was never a part of study groups like that. I mean, I had like three really close friends, three or four really close friends in law school and we kind of worked through stuff together. We would kind of stay up at night before tests, really trying to get that information together. But I, I was not, I'm not a person who likes to go to class all day, then come home and spend eight plus hours studying. I can't do that. My mind will shut down. I have to have an outlet. So my first piece of advice is to keep your sanity, keep your peace. Like if you like to exercise, make sure you keep exercising. If you like to watch a certain show, watch your shows, like record your stuff, still do what you want to do. If you don't pray to God, find you somebody spiritual to, to bless your life because law school is a totally different beast. It's just different and it will stress you because you're in a stressful environment. Everybody around you is stressed. They're going to bring their stress to your stress. You got your own stress. It's just too much. And essentially you go to a class for an entire semester and one test on one day is going to determine your grade. So, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, that's how most classes were set up at my school. So mind you, these are coming from the opinions of a person who only went to one law school. So I can't speak for everything, but it's just different. Like the law school setting is different. The studying is different. You learn like, I mean, highlighters were my best friend. Some people use index cards. I mean, you, you, you figure out your little quirks and what works for you. I would just say, if you know you got to get something done, just try to focus on it, but don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. Like don't say I have to take 15 hours and study this. Like, no, that's unrealistic. Like take you some sections, do 45 minutes, take you a break, call your boo, call your friend, get on Instagram, upload you a Snapchat story, then get back to it. Like take some time for yourself because if you don't, you're gonna break down and it's just not gonna work out for you.
it's just not gonna be good. Take some time. Once you get through law school, which is three years, um, in my mind, law school is kind of like a blur. I don't know if I blocked it out because it just wasn't the happiest time of my life. I mean, in reality, it just, I missed undergrad every day when I was in law school. I missed my friends. I missed my life as it was. And I knew that I couldn't stop because I had started and I, I knew that I was gonna continue because I had to be a lawyer. So I feel like I put a lot of stress on myself personally in law school, but when you finally get done, I mean, you then have to take the bar in whatever state or states that you would like to be barred in. And that's gonna cost money too. Just know that everything is expensive about being a lawyer and going to law school. We're gonna talk about that when I finish with this part. So basically, the bar. I took Barbary and I think without Barbary, I don't know if I would have passed the bar. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> like Barbary, they give you so many books. I went to the class. I had to physically go to the class because like I said, I don't like to study by myself. I'm better at going to class, taking copious notes, looking back at my notes. I'm a person who learns by example. So I like to see the teacher get up there and say, okay, so this is what the information is and this is how you put it into action. And I'm like, okay, I can relate that to something in my life. I like that kind of stuff. I'm an example person. Some people are more visual. Some people can just read and they got it all down packed. So whatever it is that works for you, focus on that. But when you get to the bar, I mean, that's the time that I would say you need to put more emphasis into studying and trying to really focus. Even though I really didn't study like other people, they would be up there eight, 10 hours a day. I do a couple hours, do a practice test, read a little section and I'm done. Like I just, I prayed. This was my philosophy through law school in the bar. I was like, look, Jesus, if we gonna do this, if it's meant for me to be a lawyer, you just gonna hold me down. And he held me down, like always. And <laughs> I really think it was Jesus, my mama's prayers, and Barbary that got me through the bar. I mean, it's a very intense, like 10 weeks or so. Like you graduate law school, you get like one week off and then Barbary starts. And then you in there like every day over the summer, you in your car passing all the, the birds outside flying and then the squirrels having fun and all the people outside at their picnics in the sunlight. And then you got to go into this dark building for multiple hours in a day and listen to somebody talk or watch a video of somebody talking. And then you have to study and then you have to do it again for the next few days. It sucks. It just sucks. But once you get to the bar and you take the test, I mean, like, first of all, don't be intimidated because the girl who I sat next to at the bar, when I tell you mama came in there with a Ziploc bag with 45 pencils, 33 highlighters, erasers, she looked like first day of kindergarten, like off the rip, no lie. Girl, I had two pencils, two pencils. She had like her whole desk was lined up with stuff. I was intimidated just by sitting by her. I was like, why does she have all that stuff? I feel like I need 15 more pencils. Like I, you don't need all that stuff. Like don't, don't get in the mindset of concerning yourself with what other people are doing. Just know that I study. I took my practice test. I did what I was supposed to do. You'll be fine. Like if you stress yourself through the bar, which for me, I think it was two days. It was two days. You're not going to do well. You're not going to be effective. So just really like decompress when you get done with test one, that day one, you go home, get you some wine or whatever you want. Relax. Do not study again. Go in there day two. And when you're done with it, don't talk about it. I literally had to tell my family and friends, don't ask me nothing about the bar. Don't ask me nothing about law school. Don't say, don't say nothing to start with the letter L because I might punch you in the throat. Like you're on edge the entire time you went for your results. And then nowadays they put them online. So people knew I passed bar before I did like ugh, foolishness. So just, you really just have to just find you a, a peaceful place when it comes to being in law school and taking these tests, find your peace and don't let people interrupt that and you'll be fine. So I wanted to say this part for the end because I didn't want to start the video off with like the real deal, holy feel. I mean, I feel like I'm giving you the real, but when people ask me, is it worth it to go to law school? Hindsight is 2020. So if you would ask me that today or on a bad day where I've been at work and I feel like, you know, I could be doing something else with my life or I could be doing whatever, whatever. My answer may be no. But if I'm in a place where I'm not as frustrated that day or I'm happy that I'm a lawyer, I'm happy that I had this education. I'm happy that I can put Esquire behind my name on an email and folks know I'm not playing with them because I will sue you. Boo boo. I sue people. It's like not a problem. We can do that. <laughs> I mean, it's very beneficial to be able to say I'm a lawyer. Okay. Not trying to say like, you know, I'm bragging or whatever, but if people ask me what my job is, I say I'm a lawyer. And then they're like, oh my God, da, da, da. it's very glamorous to other people. But in reality, let's just get real about it. So number one, debt. 
that's number one through five right there. Because if you're going to law school on a full ride, go. It's worth it. Absolutely, if it's free, go ahead and go. If it's gonna be real cheap, still worth it. Go. Your mama didn't pay for it. If you, you know, you ain't gotta pay it back, go. Great. If you gotta pay for your own loans, you're gonna have to think about some things. Number one, what school am I going to? How much is tuition? Can I afford it? How many loans do I have to take out to live, eat? Because you really, it's really difficult to work through law school to the people that I saw who were still working. I think most of my classmates did not work. Um, if, you, if you have to work, you can make it happen, but you just have to be very disciplined. It's not a game. Like when you get out of law school, them folks want their money back. I mean, I heard that, but I didn't think that was for real. Them folks for real. They want their money every 15th of the month. And it's not a little bit, but it's a lot of it. <laughs> so that is like my number one thing that I think about because I kind of feel like if I'm being very honest, going to law school has a ball and chain um, around my ankle at this point. It's like, I can't up and chase a dream or up and leave a secure job with a check because I got to pay these loans off. And these loans ain't little loans. I mean, it's like maybe could have bought, I could have bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to say I could have bought a lot of stuff. And I mean, it's kind of daunting when you think about how much money you have to pay back. How many years is this going to take off of my life? How many years do I have to work? How many years do I have to do A, B, and C? That becomes kind of like my my way of deciding things. And I, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. I'm like, well, like, I don't know if I can do that. I might have to stay here for a few more years. I might have to do this because I know I have to handle that debt. And that to me is one of the main reasons why I've always been like, really think about going to law school. If, you, if you're on the fence about it, think about it, okay? If you want to be a lawyer, there's no other way to be a lawyer other than to go to law school. So you have to go. But if you're just like, mm, I don't know, maybe, this ain't no maybe, okay? This is not a maybe type of situation because that loan repayment is guaranteed, very definite. So number one through five is the debt. All right. Number two, it's, it's time consuming. I think my entire law process, essentially from junior year to the end of law school, was like five and a half years. I mean, you're only in law school for three years, but you got the LSAT prep, you have the LSAT, you have your applications, you get in, you got to go for three years, you graduate, you ain't done yet, you got to sit for the bar, you got to take your bar prep course before you sit for the bar. I mean, it's, it's lengthy. And then even if you pass the bar, nothing is guaranteed. I thought I'm gonna go to law school, I'm gonna get a job that's paying me six plus figures in a year, these loans ain't gonna be nothing. Huh? Not the case. Played your life. Pause. Pound. No. Okay. <laughs> Every job is not going to pay you any money. There were people offering me literally, I could have worked at McDonald's and made more money, like no shade to somebody working at McDonald's, but that's how real it was. Like I had friends who worked at gas stations who were making more money than me. It's, and I got commas and periods behind my name. It's like that. Like I have two degrees. I have a professional degree. So it is, it's very like, I don't really know what the best word is, but sometimes it's kind of like, disrespectful and rude like i mean i done did all this work and i have nothing to like show for it as far as like finances are concerned other than debt so don't think that you're going to go to law school and it's going to be your ticket to financial freedom it may be you may very well land you a six-figure job a majority of people coming out of law school are not and you have to also consider a lot of people go back to school because the economy is bad they can't get jobs and get laid off they decide to go to professional school a lot of people pick law school because everybody can't go to medical school and you already got your masters or what have you so a lot of people decide to go to law school the industry is inundated with people so everybody's coming out of law school with you i had 230 some people graduate with me all in the same state all looking for the same job so just think about that it, it you have to really be comfortable in yourself and say, am I okay with racking up debt, which could be, depending on the school you go to, up to $100,000 or more. Am I okay with possibly not having a job for a year or two, unless I take a job that doesn't require a Juris Doctorate degree? Am I okay with taking a job that doesn't pay me a lot of money? Even my second job may not pay me a lot of money. I mean, you have to be okay with that. And if you're okay with that, and you still want to go, then go. I didn't know how real it was. I mean, the job market was awful when I came out of law school. I got a first job. It was easier for me to get a second job once I already had a job, but getting that first job was so hard. And I was, I went through a very, very, very rough time during that time because it was just like, dude, I done did all this work. Really? Like for real? You, Really? And you kind of feel like I can't get a job at the mall because everybody know I graduated and passed the bar. So what kind of foolishness is that? Like you really feel like, what am I supposed to do? 
but you got to do what you got to do. And if you are, if you really have a path, if you know what you want to do, stay on that path. I went to law school thinking I was going to practice business law. I don't, I'm a criminal law lawyer. That was the class. And that was a pretty much the section of law that interests me the most. And I just took to it. And so that's the path that I'm on right now. I can't say that I'll do this for the rest of my life. I can't say that I will lawyer for the rest of my life. I don't know, but I will say this. If you're considering going to law school, you need to consider a, a lot of things outside of just being a lawyer and not being a lawyer. It's, it's serious. And I don't want this video to come off as like, I shouldn't go to law school. I'm not saying that I'm very happy with the education I've received, with the knowledge that I have, with the ability for me to walk into a courtroom and know how to handle myself. I can represent myself and never have to pay for a lawyer. I am able to be accessible to my family. Um, not, not, not everybody. Cause some folks got too many problems and I can't work for free. Cause I got, I got bills. So y'all can't keep calling me. I can't keep doing that. But in reality, I mean, it's always great for me to be able to say I'm a lawyer. I can hang my own shingle and open my own firm. I can aspire to be a judge. I can be, you know, a lot of different things that you want to do politics. You want to be a sports agent. It's a lot of things that a law degree can grant you access to that other people wouldn't have access to. So don't, don't look at it in this small bubble you know, of just the debt and all that other stuff. I mean, just think about the ability to say, I am a lawyer. I can be a lawyer for the rest of my life. I can practice law as an entrepreneur. I can get a job at a firm. I can work in public interest. I can do a lot of different things with this particular degree. But at the same time, you have to realize what that degree is going to have um, on you. It's going to have some type of connection and some type of hold on you until you pay for it. Uh, but like I said, if you're going for free, you ain't really got nothing to worry about. So I don't know. Like, I don't want to end the video on like a negative note. I hope that y'all feel like you have a little bit more information about law school. I hope this video isn't super long. I feel like I've been sitting here for like 45 minutes. So I'm gonna try to like edit it down. But like I said, if you still have questions, definitely ask me um, below. If you ask me, would I do it all over again? I can honestly say, I don't know. Like, had you told me you can go to law school, and you're going to have to, you know, it's going to be a little hard. You might not make as much money as you want, but you'll be a lawyer. And eventually you might make a lot of money or you can graduate from undergrad and, and struggle for a whole lot of years and just maybe follow this other dream or passion that you have that may not be as secure, but maybe eventually in your life, you'll be ridiculously wealthy and happy and free from debt. I don't know what path I would take. You know, I probably would have taken the lawyer path because I'm risk averse and I don't like un uncertainty, even though law isn't certain. Really, I thought it was certain. It's not certain. Nothing in life is certain. It's just not. So <laughs> if you're thinking about it, if it's if you're on the fence, I'm, I'm going to tell you to really think about that thing because it's high. It's expensive. It's expensive. OK, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of. It takes a lot of effort. You can't just like slide through law school like you did in undergrad. Like, not saying like you did in undergrad, but like you could in undergrad. You can't do that. You can't just not come to class. Like them people take attendance sometimes in them classes. So, you know, you have to really want to do it. And once you start, if you don't finish, they still want their money back on them loans. So I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> All right. I think I pretty much covered as much as I needed to. Ask me below if you still have questions. I'll see y'all in my next video. I love y'all. Don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Bye.